Welcome to eBuilder University's on-demand video training. If you'd like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager. Now let's jump into eBuilder Enterprise homepage training. Good day, everyone. My name is Martin Astazarian, certified trainer here at eBuilder. And today what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basic practice of understanding the eBuilder homepage. When you first get on the home page at eBuilder, you might be a brand new user when you see it the first time. And upon looking at it, you'll see that it has uh, various areas where it keeps you informed as to items that you're responsible for as an individual user. We can never forget that as a user in eBuilder, you hold a role, such as a, either a project manager, a director of construction, depending on who you are. And depending on that role, uh, you have various permissions and tasks. And so upon logging into eBuilder with your username and password, you're going to land on your homepage. Now, what do you find on your homepage? Well, the first thing that I want you to notice is that your name is listed here on the upper left, which means that you're logged in, obviously, into your profile. Once you're logged in within your profile, everything moving forward will only pertain to you and eBuilder. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that when you go through the whole eBuilder system under your profile, everything you see will only pertain to you as the individual person, the projects that you're involved in, the items that you're responsible to respond to. Again, all of that fits under your profile. Now on this homepage, you're going to get access to five major tables of information, five pieces of information that are going to be pretty common throughout the whole eBuilder system. And those tables are located right here underneath your name. The first table is called Workflow in Your Court. Now, what this table is going to contain is all the items that fall under three modules, which are listed here on the bottom left of the table. Form, Processes, and Timesheets. Now, Processes is probably the most popular one in eBuilder. Forms coming in second and Timesheets coming in third. Again, if you have the time tracking module, you will have timesheets available here. If you do not have the time tracking module, this will be null. In other words, you're not going to see anything pertaining to timesheets uh, located in this box. Let's talk about the table real quick as we are with the other ones and just to make sure that you guys understand what the tables are for. So here what you're seeing is, is a very simple synopsis as to what is in this person's court, which is me in this case. The first thing it's going to list is the name of the project, the name of the process or form in question, the subject line of that transaction, the current step that it's in, and most importantly, when it's due, and if it's just simply in your court for someone to have a comment or someone else's court and they're requesting for you to comment on that transaction. A very simple example would be an RFI. If an RFI fell into your court as someone who had to be an actor, it would land here on this page and you would not see a check mark here next to request and comment. But if someone sent it to you, if it was in their court, their responsibility, then you would see a check mark there indicating that it was only sent to you for the purpose of commentary. And as we progress throughout the whole training series here in these videos, you'll understand how that works. But for now, we're just going to talk about what's on the home page. Now, every table is equipped with this drop-down menu here, which will allow you to control how many items within the table you want visible when you go into the table. But if you want to see more, then obviously you'll either click into the individual items themselves or you'll click into the physical modules here and it will show you the complete list of things that are in your court. If let's say you want to limit yourself to the first 10, as in this an example. Below that, you're going to have my first 10 tasks. If you want to take notes on this, this has to do with the schedule module. If you're using the schedule module in eBuilder, what's going to be listed here are activities that you are responsible for. Now, as we go into the training again, you're going to learn more about how the schedule module works. But if you are assigned as a resource or a task manager to any kind of an activity in the schedule module, this is where it would be listed. And the purpose of this is to make sure that you as the manager can manage the percent complete of the task and stay in touch with the finish date of the task. Again, a quick glance at an activity that you're responsible for within a project schedule. Next table has to do with submittals. If you are involved in the submittal process, items that are in your court for review or in your court to close or verify are going to land here. And the items that you're going to see in this table are pretty self-explanatory. You're going to see project. You're going to see the title of the item itself. Maybe the package number right here. 
maybe the revision number, if that's something that happened to the item, the due date, and who it's currently held by. So submittals is one of those things where you're managing three major aspects, right? You're managing time, you're managing commentary, and most importantly, you're managing as to where it is, right? Whose court it's in. Because you need to understand at all times, specifically if you're a user within the organization, where something is in the submittals process. The items in this table below here called items pending approval are items that strictly have to do with cost. So if you're a user per se that does not have access to the cost module, this table won't contain any, any information for you. But if you are, let's say you're a person who approved contracts or invoices or any of those typical transactions you're going to find throughout a project, you're going to find that transaction listed here. Again, it's simply stated in this table to give you a brief synopsis as to what you're responsible to review, approve, void, cancel, all the different decisions that you're making throughout the day. Now, this table here, it's called quarantine spam. So because eBuilder has the ability to accept documents via email directly into its documents module, sometimes we get spam. Spam has been received by some of our clients. It, which is, you know, a normal thing. Now, with an eBuilder, we assign someone specifically to manage that spam. And if any of it has been quarantined, it will be listed here in this table. Again, probably not the most popular table on the home page, but that's what it's for. Now, on the left-hand side of these tables, you're going to have what we call the Quick Start menu. Now, the first thing I want you to think about with Quick Start are two modules, Forms and Processes. If you've already had some sort of training in eBuilder, you understand what those modules are, specifically if you've been involved in the design of those modules or you participate in those modules. What the Quick Start is designed to do is, is if you have been assigned as a person that can initiate any of these transactions, you will have the ability to do so quickly by clicking on these links. Traditionally in eBuilder, when you wanted to start a process or a form, you had to go into the module itself, choose the project, and then proceed with the form. It's the same thing, except now you're doing it a little bit quicker. You're skipping a couple clicks, and that's the whole purpose of the quick start. Now, the idea behind this was is that many people are constantly going into eBuilder to just run processes, and that's what this menu was designed for. So when you log into these items here, which we'll show you in further videos, you'll be able to initiate a form or a process much quicker and skip a couple clicks so that you're not caught up clicking unnecessarily. On the right-hand side, you're going to find an area called Announcements. Now, this is totally configurable by an EB administrator. And what the announcements are used for is just simply to inform all the users. Now, the announcements are universal, meaning that you cannot create an announcement for one person and for another person to see. So all the announcements are going to be available to all users, no matter what your role is. So it's a great communication tool, in my opinion. In fact, we put a nice example here about best practices and quality just in the sample account. But ultimately, this is what you're going to see. So when you see announcements, everybody can see the same announcement. And if there's multiple announcements, or if you'd like to update it as an EB ad administrator, you can kind of go through this box here and look at all the various announcements that are provided. Finally, on the right-hand side here, you're going to see calendar items. So calendar is the meeting minutes module, as I like to call it, where most meetings that are held or organized within the calendar module, meeting minutes are recorded for them. And so what you're simply going to find here on the home page is you're going to simply find any invitation to meetings that may have been assigned to you. So as you can see, I have been invited to a couple of OAC meetings for the training project. So again, what you're going to see here is the time of the meeting, the date of the meeting in bold up at the top, and you're going to see what project it pertains to. Again, a quick way of accessing these items in the event that you're participating or that you have to drill down into that information. So in short, that's pretty much the home page. Now at the very top here, you're going to be able to scroll through projects that you are a member of. Now let's keep in mind, when you are a user, once again, you are assigned to specific projects. So when you go into eBuilder and you click this drop down menu, the only projects you're going to be able to see are projects that you are a member of. Now what this drop down menu does is, and I, I just want to you know show you really quick, is that when you click into it, you're going to access the project's document repository. What does that mean? You're going to go into the Documents module. Now, the alternative of going into the Documents module is clicking this tab right here and choosing the project. 
Well, this is kind of like a quick access to the documents module, because when you click into the project itself, I'll click into Coral Gables High School, it will take you into the documents module for that project, as you can see here. Okay, now this project doesn't have a lot of documents in the document folder structure, but we were able to access the documents module with one click. And if I click on the home tab here on the upper left, I'll be right back on the home page and I'll be able to handle all the other transactions that I'm responsible for. One other thing I want to point out on the home page is the search. This search will follow you throughout eBuilder, but specifically on the home page where you'll be able to search items throughout the entire system. If you want to put in a keyword you want to search a document for or maybe a process transaction, you can click that. And if you have access to that information, it will pop up in your search. On the right here, you're going to have your username listed and you're going to have a couple of links that may come in handy for you. So the setup link is going to take you to what we call the setup. Now, depending on what caliber of user you are, if you're an eBuilder administrator, it will take you into what we call the administration tools, which will allow you to alter eBuilder settings and configuration, which is part of our self-sustainable model. If you move down the list, you're going to see a couple of more links that really help people out. So the eBuilder community is basically an area that we've designed where people can kind of talk about their experience with an eBuilder. You can exchange ideas. It's kind of like a direct link. And if you click on it, it will actually show you a little video here about what it's about. So I invite you guys to explore that. Now, the next link in the user menu is called the product ideas. This is fabulous. The product ideas is basically a way that you can log into eBuilder and share enhancements or things that you want to improve in the system, right? And the way that it works is, is that if you have an idea, and I'll go into the product ideas page, if you have an idea, you simply add your new idea with a lot of detail as far as the use case or things that you feel may be an improvement to the system based on your way, the way you use the system. And once that's in, people can come into the product ideas page, meaning other users, and vote on the idea. Now, the benefit of this is that if you have enough votes, your idea could be put on the product roadmap, which means that eBuilder will actually build a solution around your idea. So some ideas are obviously more popular than others, but it's a great way of communicating things that you feel eBuilder could do to improve. And working with eBuilder for close to a decade now, I can tell you that any idea that has been shared is the result that you're seeing in the system right now. I've seen many ideas shared at our user conference, in small discussions, even within product meetings that we've had, and the ideas have all come to fruition based on their validity and their importance in the system. I invite you guys to really use that product ideas page because it's really, really helpful. Moving into this, you have the help menu. The help menu will take you into this window here and you'll be able to either go through an index of topics or free search what you're looking for. So if let's say you want more information on documents, if you just type in the word document and you hit search, it will give you every piece of information related to documents. So again, if you need help, if you're looking for some functionality within the home page or within any other module in eBuilder, the help menu is here for you as well. And of course, if you want to log out of the system, this is one way to do it. You can log out or you can simply just close your window, okay, depending on how you want to do it. Over here is the question mark. This also acts as a help link. So as opposed to clicking help here, you can click this question mark and it should take you to the same window that we just saw. Now, the like and dislike buttons, very popular. But what this serves the purpose for is to help you quickly communicate how you feel about your experience in the eBuilder system. This will follow you throughout the whole eBuilder experience. And the cool thing about this is that if you like something, sure, it'll go into our records and we'll know that you're liking your experience on this page. If you don't like something, the great thing about that is that we'll actually reach out to you. So one of our support reps will reach out to you and actually ask you what it is that you're having trouble with. There's many different reasons why someone may not like a page. They may not like it because maybe they can't find what they're looking for or they're new and they're trying to get into the eBuilder system after a training and maybe they forgot an aspect of their training. So the benefit of clicking not like is the fact that someone may reach out to you and ask you how they can help you. We have this because we really want to be in touch with our users and we really want to, you know, take your pulse and make sure that you guys understand that we're here to serve you. So I want to make sure that if you guys use those, that you were really going to respond to them. And we're really going to take care of what it is you like and don't like. OK, so I invite you guys to use all those features.
Now, finally, what we're going to go through throughout the training series are all these tabs up here. And these tabs are representative of the modules that eBuilder has within your account. Now, depending on who you are, in other words, what organization you are, the amount of tabs you see here at the top will vary, okay, depending on what tabs or what modules your organization has purchased. But the most popular ones are going to be cost management, documents, processes, schedule, reports, which in my opinion is the most important reason why people buy eBuilder. So all of these tabs right here will appear, and they may be in different colors. There may be different logos on the screen, obviously, depending on your organization. But ultimately, all of them serve the same purpose. They will be able to give you access to the different aspects of your project, and you'll be able to access that information with just a couple of clicks. And with that, I'm going to conclude this training video on the home page. If you'd like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager.